Hey, Legal Eagles, you hear a lot about case briefs in law school. What is a case brief? Why do people do them? And why do students hate them so damn much? What can you do to get the benefits without the hassle of case briefs? Well, today we're answering all of those questions. And by the end of the video, you'll know exactly what goes into a case brief and how to supercharge them. So stick around. Before we get into the case brief, we need to talk about law school in general for a second. Law school is taught using the case method, or the inductive approach of learning the law through cases that have already supposedly applied the law. So for the sake of class discussion, uh, professors assign several cases for reading before students get to class. That can result in having to read dozens of cases a night and potentially hundreds of pages worth of cases. So let's start with what is a case in the law school context. I know this might seem simplistic, but stick with me just for a second. In law school, when you read a case, what you're really reading is an appellate opinion. That is, after the trial or judgment in the court below, one of the parties claims that the trial court was wrong and appeals the decision to the court of appeals. The factual record is set. You can't change it, you can't call additional witnesses, there's no additional evidence. The parties write legal briefs, and after weighing the briefs of both sides, the appellate court will then issue a written opinion. Usually that's on a narrow issue of law. In theory, the appellate court summarizes the important facts of the case, but not necessarily always. And in theory, they write only as much analysis as is necessary to adjudicate the appeal. Uh, but this is almost never the case. The uh, appellate opinions are almost always longer than they need to be, sometimes to provide context and sometimes because judges just like to hear themselves talk. Um, so in law school, a case brief is a summary of a particular appellate opinion. Standard advice says that your case brief should look like this. It should start with a case citation. You should have the name of both parties, which is usually something like Jones versus Smith, um, it should include the publisher of the particular case, the reporter that the case can be found in, the court that issued the, the decision, the year that the opinion was published, the procedural posture of the case, meaning how it got to the Court of Appeal, the history of the case, a discussion of uh, where it came from, the statement of facts, the narrative story of the case, the issues that were decided on appeal, the arguments on either side, the policy implications of the different ways that the Court of Appeal could have gone, the rule of law or the black letter law that can be inductively uh, discerned from the uh, app uh, appellate court, the rationale that the appellate court used to decide the case, and any particular dissents or concurring opinions that are not necessarily the law of the case, but at least go with it. So a case brief, uh, that's the notes that you are taking regarding the particular case, regarding those details of the case. It's a summary of the so-called important parts of the case. And by the way, as a free bonus, you can download our guide to case briefs and learn how to do them the right way in the link below. But why do students do these summaries? Well, there are three primary reasons. The first is to learn how to read a case. Standard thinking says that the more cases you read, the more you will be able to think like a lawyer. And it's certainly true that in practice, you'll be reading lots and lots of cases. So it's a good idea to understand what goes into a case, why judges decide the way that they do, uh, and uh, to be able to use cases in your practice uh, as both a sword and a shield when you're litigating a, a particular uh, idea. Uh, the second reason is that you need to prepare for finals. So uh, often you'll use cases on a final exam. Um, obviously, most of what you discuss in class is going to be about the particular cases that you're reading because that's the case method itself. And so it's not surprising that you'll use a lot of this information on a final exam. And when you're talking about an issue spot or exam, as you'll often get in law school, then you can often use the cases that you discuss as analogies, as uh, a way that the, the court, when it's your professor, should come out. And if you don't take notes on the cases that you read and the discussion that you have about the particular cases, by the time that finals comes around, you'll probably have forgotten all of your cases. So it's good to have a written record of what it was that you actually read. 
And of course, there's the third reason, which is to prepare for class. And frankly, if everyone is being honest, this is probably the number one reason. You're compiling your notes so that if the professor calls on you in class, you're able to answer their questions about the particular case. This is the infamous cold call in law school, and it is the bane of most law students' existence. It's the Socratic method to pepper your students with as many questions as possible until they're simply unable to answer uh, any more questions about a given subject. And the idea is that the more you're questioned about something, uh, the more you will learn what's important and what's not. Uh, and by the way, uh, the, the funny thing is that when class participation doesn't count for anything, spending all of this time uh, on preparing for class instead of, instead of preparing for finals can be a bad strategy. But I get it, it's terrifying to be called on by the professor in class, so uh, students are gonna err on the side of uh, reading their cases uh, more carefully than they might need to, uh, and taking more copious notes than they might uh, need to in order to have a, a fruitful class discussion. Uh, but here at Legal Eagle, we think that most case briefing that students do is unnecessary and a waste of time. Why? Well, because you're going to be tested using an issue spotting hypothetical. And we have an entire video on what an issue spotting uh, hypo or exam essay looks like. Uh, you can check the link below. Uh, but on an issue spotter, you can't use 95% of the information that you put in your case brief. It's a waste of time. Um, sure, the professor might ask about all of that information in class, but the professor can't ask that kind of information on the exam. And the test is what matters. And I can't emphasize that enough. I've seen hundreds of issue spotting answers, and never once did they give points for the procedural posture of a particular case, or the history of the case, or even the rationale, or the case name. An issue spotting exam makes you pretend that you're an attorney. And as in real life, you're rarely using that extra information about a case. What you are using is the narrative story of the case or the black letter law that you'll find in a case. You might apply just the bare essential uh, meaning of what the law is, but ig ignore all the rest of the story. Or you might use the, uh, the facts of a particular case to make an analogy to the issue or the, the hypo that's in the issue spotter to make an argument one way or the other, to say that this case is like the case that you read before in that the facts are similar, or uh, that it should come out differently because the facts are different. But the thing is, the case brief takes up so much time. It takes up hundreds of hours, and you're focusing on generally the wrong thing. We think that instead of doing the standard style of case briefing, where you highlight your case brief and make it look like a rainbow with all the different colors of the highlighter, and write all of those different uh, dozen things that you can write about a particular case in your case brief, we think you should do what we call a three-point brief. A three-point brief focuses only on the three things that your professor cares about. And more importantly, it's the only three things that you're actually going to use on your final exam. You can learn how to write a three-point brief in our free guide to law school case briefs, and the link to that is down below. It will, I promise, save you hundreds, if not thousands of hours during your law school career. Uh, and also, check out our video on how to study for class using the flipped case method. The link for that is also below. It'll save you so much pain in terms of reading your cases. Uh, and also, as always, please click on the like and subscribe button if you liked this video. The more people subscribe, the more videos we'll make on how to crush law school. So what do you think about case briefs? Did you come up with a way of case briefing that works for you? Did you abandon them halfway through the semester? Or have you not started law school and you're wondering just what the hell a case brief is? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time at Legal Eagle, think like a lawyer and ace the exam. Um, before we get into law school in general for a second. <laughs> Who wrote this crap? Appellate... After... And after weighing... Uh, legal briefs to the... How did they do... I don't know.